Hello everyone, Storm11 here. Today we'll be taking a look into Winter Storm Cade. There is a major update for the Northeast on Winter Storm Cade. It doesn't really look like to be uh, a Winter Storm for the Northeast, unfortunately for you guys. But anyways, I'll get you into the reasons why for that in a moment. But first, let's take a look into the GFS model here. And uh, the GFS, I don't think has a really accurate look to this, but we actually had the NAM, and the NAM, I believe, has a really good handle on this. First of all, I think it's too warm, especially across the uh, lower Ohio Valley, like Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Those areas there should be all snow, in my opinion. By looking into these blue lines here, it is definitely... It is around freezing, but more than likely, especially up here on the north and western side, it's going to be below freezing. So all this here will be snow. It's going to be a pretty wet snow as well with this system. And here's your issue here. The slow here starts to get cut off. Now, what we had before is a new system that develops off the Appalachian Mountains. We're not really seeing that anymore, but till later on. And um, it's also having a much warmer look for the Northeast. Now, probably the best chance for the snow for the Northeast would probably for New York State. But later on, there will probably be a new system developing uh, for around Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. So they may be able to get a second punch there for snow. But that's just later on, so... It is all within one system, but I think your best chance of snow would be probably around Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and even New York State as well. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, uh, Rhode Island, Delaware, Maryland, those states, and even Virginia as well. I don't think you won't see much of any snow from the system, but fortunately, probably for portions of Virginia and Pennsylvania as well, may be able to get some of it, but those other states I've named, probably not going to be seeing any snow, unfortunately. Portions of Maryland probably be able to see it as well. But the GFS doesn't have a really good look to it, in my opinion. Let's take a look into the Canadian model. And it uh, has a little bit of aggressive look later on, but first, let's take a look into the four first portions of the system. So we got quite a bit of snow on the north side. It's it's pretty well disorganized. As you can tell here, it is also a very weak system, so it's not going to have a lot of moisture with it. You can also see here, uh, most of your snow looks to be kind of in the Midwest and probably near the Great Lakes. And as well, like we said, I think that system's going to be developing a little bit too late for a lot of you guys. And... Um, and there's even some model trends that it may might not be able to get much of any snow because it's probably going to be passing you to the west because we actually have a little bit of high pressure going on up to the north. And there might be a couple more systems after that. We're going to definitely watch for the southeastern United States, the eastern, northeastern, south central United States. We're actually starting to see uh, a typical weather pattern winter weather pattern where we have those tracks going pretty far south and you get snow on the north side which is good news for a lot of snow lovers that kind of live in the ohio valley in the mid-atlantic which we haven't seen really a big snow in a long time and let's move on into the icon model now okay let's move on to the 12z then now, I do not really like the icon model that much, but we'll look into it. But, I mean, as you can see here, the icon model is very similar. Most of the snow, where I believe it would be staying in the Midwest from for the system. And, again, that system is going to be developing. Seems like it's going to be developing over New Jersey and Pennsylvania and probably even Delaware and Maryland as well. Like it was before, it just started to develop around Virginia and West Virginia. So it's, dev it's pretty much developing pretty late now at this point here. Now that just brings major changes to the snowfall forecast here. 
and um probably the most of the snow will be around your freezing line which is pretty much looking to be either northern new york state or even into canada so i think most of your snowfall amounts united states wise will be in the midwest overall for like the northeast it might be in the far northeast talk about like maine vermont new hampshire the york state you, it's on jeopardy probably right now and that's probably going to be the hardest state to forecast with the system and what a lot of people are missing that i've seen is the uh the vorticity the energy the rotation in the atmosphere which i've shown you guys on the last video talking about that and uh that's what been a lot of people's missing. I've only seen one other person show it. That is weather decoded. Nobody else I've seen has been showing the vortex. And that is very important to the system. And that can also change everything. But let's go ahead and move on into the European model. The best model out there. So, very disorganized. Uh, it's got the low pressure system over Mississippi. But I believe it's actually around... Missouri at this point here There it goes and it starts to intensify a little bit as it reaches to the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes That's a decent amount of snow For Michigan, Illinois, and Wisconsin But look out ahead of this here. It does have a little bit icy, but I think that's just for the higher higher elevations there And so we kind of continue on there's your new system developing but only in the higher Elevations probably has the best chance for for snow by the European standpoint. And as you can see, there just not a lot of snow to forecast for the Northeast, unless if you live in in the higher elevations, so you could probably able to get yourself a pretty good snow event or an ice event too. But uh, let's take a look into the uh, let's see here, the upper dynamics. Here we go. Your vorticity, 500 millibar vorticity. This is your energy in the atmosphere. So you got, what if a piece of energy probably looks to be over Texas? You got a piece of energy in uh, Canada and one in Kansas and Nebraska. And they're going to start to join forces here. And, and here we go. It's loading pretty slow now this is something you want if you want a pretty good winter storm here you want to have a pretty good connection of energy kind of wrapping around the system something like this here that's kind of where you get a bowling ball type here just like the severe weather we had back in early january it has a bowling ball type of feature and this is what we're seeing here now there's not going to be any severe weather with the system it's actually going to be too cold for it and we still got a pretty good feature here. Now, there's a chance for flash flooding across. Well, actually, not really flash flooding, but a chance for a good, a good amount of rain for Kentucky as well. With one to two inches of rain, the way I'm seeing this here, from south to north, by the look of that. But what you're starting to see here, it's actually starting to shear out. Your old pressure system right now is currently over the Illinois and Indiana state line. And you can see here, it's not really that impressive here. It starts to get a little bit wobbly, and it's not that really organized. And now, your energy is starting to get cut off up here. So, what's happening here is the storm system is dying down, and it's kind of having its own energy. And it starts to shear out. You can really tell it's really starting to shear out as it kind of gets it into Michigan. And it kind of sticks there stays there a little bit stationary then starts to push a little bit to the east now looks like it may try to get a little bit of energy out ahead of it from the ocean of uh, the atlantic ocean but there's still a lot of uncertainties for the northeast at this point here as you can tell there and it kind of stays stationary up there as well so if you probably live in maine probably the best chance so would be for northern maine at that point at least from the european model standpoint here now the NAM. Now, I believe the NAM has a really good handle on this system here. 
it has a pretty realistic look as well so right now we're kind of waiting for this to load in for the vorticity here and again it has that little bit bowling ball feature now I believe this is could be this uh, what's the word for it I think this model here the system has it stronger than any other model I believe at least that's what it was a, a couple days ago you can see it's actually more disorganized here as a kind of the low pressure system system is actually a little bit further south it's actually kind of into several illinois southern indiana and western kentucky so that can really change out a little bit and then it it actually stays pretty stationary so if you probably live in illinois indiana you could probably able to get quite a bit of snow even wisconsin and michigan too kentuckians out there you're probably able to get a decent amount of snow out of this probably at best up to one inch there but uh you can see here it's it does stay there for a while pretty much like for an entire day kind of stays stationary it's pretty wobbly it's not that well organized and it's also the energy is cut off too so it's shearing out it's not that impressive and you can see here about the low pressure system here it's actually pretty far north so if you're south of the low pressure system you're not going to get any much of any snow at all unless if you're on the northern side you're probably able to get some a decent amount of snow and that's about as far out as it could go let's take a look into the precipitation here oh yeah i forgot to show you guys these snowfall amounts which we're going to, have to look on a different website so here you go so a pretty weak low, 1010 millibars is pretty weak, 1009. You got a decent amount of snow on the north and western side of this. You can see there how it stays stationary for a while. There might be even a good amount of snow for Indiana and Ohio there. How they're getting these waves here. And a new low starts to develop here. It's actually happening a little bit later too. It does develop a kind of... Kind of well, I'll say the low pressure develops pretty late. It's also very weak as well. It does bring a little bit of ice potential there for Maine. But again, not a lot of snow at all from there. Let's take a look at two of those snowfall maps. So let's first take a look at the icon model. And this is its prediction here. You can tell you, it's not a lot of snow for the northeast. I think we're going to focus more on the northeast because that's what got a lot of people's attention. At least we'll get the eastern United States on this one. So there's still a little bit of snow left for the Midwest here. You can see Missouri, Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, Upper Michigan. Probably about three to four inches of snow left. You can see again those higher elevations might be able to get most of the snow. It's putting out probably up to seven inches in a few spots there. Let's look into a couple other models. Let's take a look at the GFS. Again, those higher elevations probably see most of the snow than everybody else. And I don't think the GFS has a really good handle in the Ohio Valley. I think people can see more snow for like Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, probably even Kentucky as well. I think you guys can see more snow when the GFS is putting out. The CMC here, um, most of the snowfall amounts is actually kind of staying in New York State there, but I think this can happen a little bit further north, probably a little bit closer or right on top of the border there. You can see here the Midwest is actually still getting a lot more snow with 6 to 7 inches. I think that could be a little bit overdone, but isolated amounts might be able to see that. Let's take a look into the NAM 12KM. And as you can see here, it's got a decent amount of snow up in the northeast here. But again, it's really going to be hard to forecast on this one here because many things could change. And I don't think it's a really accurate look for the northeast, especially when it includes sleet. I don't think Maine will see 9 or 10 inches of snow, even for New Hampshire and Vermont as well. I think you could probably see maybe 1 to 3 inches because it does include sleet, as you can see up there. And if you've seen from here, 
it's just quite a bit of ice out ahead of it, so I don't think it's a really accurate look. We may be able to see a different look on this here. And uh, I don't think we have that on this here, unfortunately, winter weather. Yes, we actually do. So, total snowfall. Let's take a look on here. As you can see, there are a decent amount of snow out for the Midwest. And there you go. You can see how much it dramatically changes here. Look at these. Now, both of these are the same model, by the way. And as you can see here, most of the snow, again, kind of staying in New York State, even for portions of Pennsylvania as well, for the Northeast. Probably at most, showing about 8 inches. I think part of that is going to be lake effect snow. Say so think down here. But for winter storm, K by itself, probably subtract this by a couple of inches here. And that would probably be your snowfall totals. And again, you can see here, but the border of the United States into Canada, we're going to have most of the snow. About 8 inches as it shows there. And the name of 3KM. Again, I don't think it's a really accurate look for the Northeast. But it is very high res into those higher elevations. Here's the same model. Uh, model. So. And again. You can see here, it does not show that much of any snow there. About two to three inches in those higher elevations. Meanwhile, North Illinois, maybe eight to nine inches. I think that's a little overdone, in my opinion. We'll see how much ice this actually has on here. Because the models are kind of indicating a little bit of ice potential. Oh yeah, that's definitely overdone. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see that much ice. That's way too much. You can see our peaks. Yeah, over an inch of ice. I highly doubt that. But there's probably a decent chance for ice accumulations for those higher elevations. Those higher elevations, maybe a quarter of an inch of ice. Maybe a little bit more because of that moisture. I mean, you never know. This bottle here could be right here. So, And also do not really know some of these areas to that well so I could be wrong but we'll see what happens here you can see it's spinning out a little bit of ice accumulations in Missouri Illinois and Michigan as well but I don't think I'm gonna create a forecast on this one here it's gonna be really on jeopardy for the Northeast especially for those uh, people that live on the northern side of New York State or along the Canadian border it's gonna be a that's, that area is going to be on jeopardy, I would say. Those higher elevations, probably probably close to the same thing. It kind of de it really depends on how much moisture you got for this system here. Excuse me. Um, but anyways, guys, this is our for guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this big update. If you all did like this video, hit that like button. If you really do like my channel hit the subscribe button hit that bell notification so you never miss an upload if y'all guys got questions about this you put in the comment section down below i answer you guys questions i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye